Hello from Porto. I hope you enjoy this week's Walk and Talk. All right. Oh, wow. I just got crazy busy all of a sudden, but we are in northern Portugal today. Last week's Walk and Talk, we were in southern Portugal uh, in Faro. So we're in Porto now where all the port wine is made. It's an absolutely beautiful city. And we're going to be talking today. There's a lot to cover, actually. We have got everything from um, network systems going down in Australia, absolute chaos and carnage. We have got payment systems in the US going down, three separate incidents. We've got China and India upset with the European Union over these new carbon taxes. Gosh, it's such a busy, <laughs> it's such a busy area. We should have done this walk and talk earlier. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. There are cars everywhere, people all in front but we'll see how we get on with this. But we got a lot to get through and maybe we'll show you a little bit of the town as well. So let's get started. Okay, so the first article then is um, around Australia's telecommunication systems that went down. Uh, Optus, it's called. Australia's second largest telecom provider went down nationwide. This affected payment systems, transport, hospitals, and emergency services. So drop a comment below if you were affected by this. Everyone's um, filming this here. Let's see what it is. Some sort of uh, art installation, a rabbit. Yeah, so they're saying this outage led to crippling chaos is the headline here but I, I want to pick up on one point i think was that made me laugh actually and it said that here we go they interviewed this guy on the street and they said how did it affect you right this wasn't you know a teenager or something like that this <laughs> which you would expect so gosh this is this is going to be interesting i'm always getting run over already here uh, okay so they interviewed this man on the street and you expect him to be quite street savvy here's what he said without my phone i can't do anything i make all my payments online i don't hold cash and now my google maps isn't working so i'm completely lost and i have no idea how to get home from here <laughs> what what how could someone how on earth can he not know how to get home use buses trains you know, driving, whatever it was that he was doing. Absolute mayhem. Gosh, this city is absolutely stunning. I've got to show you, I've got to show you this a second. Let's just do a quick panoramic here. Wow, look at this. So it says that about 40% of the population were without the use of their mobile or cell phones from 4 a.m. all the way through to 5.30 p.m. I would probably use this as a good test case if you're in Australia as to what's going to happen when, you know, cyber attacks and all the other stuff they're talking about take place in the future. Because, yeah, that will be a good exercise for you to get used to this sort of thing. So what was the compensation to everyone? 200 gigabytes of data. Yep. That was the compensation. So people are furious. But let's go on to the next one uh, story then. This is the Federal Reserve telling the banks to give customers help. The Fed officials are encouraging banks to assist uh, customers affected by deposit delays after the ACH, the automated clearinghouse, had a technical glitch that caused a lot of problems. And they're saying it was due to human error and it took hours and hours to fix. There was another one as well for this data center. It was a data center that looks after all the banks in the US and they said that it overheated. So all of this happened at almost the same time. So data center technical issues, looks after all these big banks, two and a half million payment transactions were delayed and now customers are upset because they have to pay fees on these delays. So the Fed is telling the banks not to charge them fees. I mean, you'd think that would be completely obvious, wouldn't you? But apparently not. 
And then we had a bug in the Fed's payment system. So all of these things happen exactly the same time. So this was not just the ACH, but also the Fed payment system. Let me get the info here. It began at around 11 a.m. and went through to 4.44 p.m. At least it wasn't 3.33 p.m. And it says that this showcases the vulnerabilities in the current system. I wonder what they mean by that then. I wonder if they're preparing everyone for this central bank digital currency, this new Fed now system and everything else that they want to do. But they're saying there's so many global issues right now with payment systems that something has to be done. And they keep talking about how new systems will need to be integrated. Of course they keep talking about this. Of course, it's only a matter of time now. Now, all of this is at the same time that credit card balances in the US have topped a trillion dollars. And not just that, if we break this down, it's over $6,000 per person in the US is the average credit card balance now. And that's according to the New York Fed. And they're also talking about how the inflation and the high rates of interest are going to bump this up even more because people are struggling and they're reliant on credit cards. And it's interesting as well, they're reducing some of the periods, the 0% free periods, especially in the UK. About six major credit cards have done this now, where they used to give you, say, two years, and now it's a year and a half. So this is another pattern that we're seeing. It says in this article, despite the high cost of credit card debt, 35% of cards reviewed have APRs of 29% and 11% of the cards have an APR of 30% or higher. Guys, that is crazy. That is absolutely insane. It's just pure, you know, you get into debt slavery there if you've got rates that high. But let's go on. I don't know if you can see behind that some sort of cable car system. I've not been on it yet. So I'm going to take you on with me and Kristen for the first time here. Are you ready? Should we go on the cable cars? Yep, let's go check it out. All right. All right, here we are then. Oh, it's echoey in here. A little bit echoey. A little bit of echo. <laughs> I'll, sit, I'll sit over here. Okay, I'm going to be taking pictures and videos. All and right, all right, Christian's just moved over. Gosh, this is beautiful. I almost don't want to talk over the beauty of this, but we've got to get this walk and talk. This is more like a ride and talk now, don't so the next one then is Citigroup launches project Bora Bora. How weird is that? So this is from the CEO, Jane Fraser. So this is going to lead to a job cut of around 10% across the entire company. So that's very interesting. Now, I was like, Bora Bora, that's a weird name for the project. So I looked it up. Bora Bora is a small Pacific island northwest of Tahiti in French Polynesia. I wonder if that's some sort of a code then because i thought it was a little bit strange next one then gosh this is the best walk and talk we've ever done isn't it you like this one Kristen? yeah she's smiling she loves it so the next one then is california electricity rates Kristen is from california do you want to hear the, the absolutely bizarre story about california electricity rates it, it wouldn't shock me okay yeah. i want to get your reaction okay so ready <laughs> there is now a new proposal to set electricity rates and charges not based on how much you use, but how rich you are in the state. So, so here's a breakdown of that then. Households earning between $28,000 and $69,000 would only face a monthly charge of $34 for their electricity. Those with incomes ranging from $69,000 to $180,000 would see a monthly charge of $73. Households earning over $180,000 would encounter a monthly charge of $128. Critics, including the supervisor, Jim Desmond, argue that the policy could lead to overconsumption and electricity shortages, as there would be no cost incentive to conserve energy, undermining investments in residential solar energy. There are also concerns it could lead to unrestricted rate hikes and surcharges by the government leading to an exodus that we are already seeing. Okay, we've got to get a little view of this a second since we're coming into the top here, the port. Yeah. Wow, look at that gosh, that is stunning, absolutely breathtaking. Oh wow, look at this. 
Okay guys, you gotta visit Porto in northern Portugal, honestly. It's incredible. And it's not just incredible for the views, it's also incredible for the food and drink. So if you like your food and drink, definitely plan a visit here. While they still allow us to, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to navigate here. All right, let's go this way around. Pretty busy area. So let's talk about the next one then. And that is China and India challenging the EU over their new carbon tax. This seems so bizarre to be doing all this, talking all this news while walking through all this uh, beautiful scenery. But, uh, but anyway, let's go this side, I think. This side's quieter. All right, so there's a new carbon tax that we know about, the EU, and they're trying to put it onto China and India. So what they're saying is, if you want to do all these carbon taxes and everything else, that's your business to the European Union. But don't try and put it on us. But the EU is saying that they have to, because they're part of the supply chain, do this carbon tax as well. And it's called the CBAM. So this is the, stands for Border Adjustment Mechanism. So it's a, a carbon tax that affects imports like steel which they view as a trade barrier. So they've also initiated, the EU's responded by saying it's initiated this program where it can be phased. So it gives India and China time to make their products more sustainable and environmentally friendly. But the fees begin in 2026 and the charges, surcharges are four to 6% of the import cost. So that's gonna be very interesting indeed. Here we go, have a view of this for a moment while that noisy train's going by. Next story then is about Switzerland. So if you are Swiss, this one is an interesting one. So this is all about nuclear power plants. So there's been a proposal now to U-turn the closure of the Swiss nuclear plants, like what happened with Germany. So if you recall the environmentalists and all the politicians, they wanted to close the nuclear because it wasn't carbon efficient, which I proved to you was absolute nonsense. The carbon emissions on nuclear is less than renewables, actually. So what they're doing now is they're planning to keep more of their nuclear reactors open, whereas before they were going to close them. So they're allowed to keep them open up to 2040 now. And this is despite the 2017 referendum as well to actually phase out nuclear power because it's 40% of Switzerland's energy. But environmentalists are angry, it says, about this, that they're keeping these nuclear reactors on saying, what about the planet? What about climate change? I don't think these people quite understand that the nuclear is not <laughs> adding to any form of climate change, whether you believe in all that or not. I mean, this is, this is the intelligence of certain people, I guess, now. And it says that they're angry because they should have followed Germany's lead. Oh yeah, have you seen German GDP right now? Since they're closing all their energy off. And talking of craziness, let's just end on the most crazy story then of the week that I've seen. So here we go. Teachers are trying to now ban novels from school. This reminds me of the old book burning situation. So there's an example here, there's loads of examples, but mostly California, but let me give you one from Washington State. And now the teachers are pushing to ban To Kill a Mockingbird from school. So they're arguing that the book is outdated, harmful, and centers on white supremacy, which they believe is, uh, creates a barrier to train going past right in front of the camera here to understanding other to understanding other perspectives so even though this book has got this you know all these awards and all these prizes um, best book of the past 125 years it's claimed that this book is just not inclusive enough so it needs to be removed from the curriculum so there we go and uh, it's already been removed from a number of ninth grade classes because they're just saying it does not represent the United States anymore. It needs to become more representative. I wonder how many of all of these books and everything else are gonna be removed before this is all done with. At least though, some of these things, people have got copies of them at home and hopefully we won't ever get to the book burning 
stage with all this. Pretty crazy, but it's hard to focus on such negative things on such a beautiful walk like this. This truly is uh, one of the best, most beautiful places I've been in a very, very long time. So here we go, let me do a bit of free promo for the tourism board of Porto here and for the Portuguese if you're watching. Here we go, a little bit of promo, let's get some more tourism here for you guys because this is absolutely breathtaking city. It really is. So I hope you enjoyed today's walk and talk. We're gonna wrap it up here then. So thanks for watching today. Take care, God bless you guys and have a blessed weekend. All right, see you soon. How's the port? What, are you filming me? Um, I, I gotta do it properly now. Mmm, yes. Mmm, mmm. Oh, delicious.